Week number one in college football. That's right. Week number one. Technically, week number one. Week one started last week, obviously. <laughs> and we got an interesting slate all for six straight days from September the 1st to September the 6th. It's going to be one hell of a time. And we start on Wednesday, September the 1st with the, um, whatever, whatever the, um, Whatever that kickoff is supposed to be, you know, for UAB and Jacksonville State, because UAB's home stadium isn't really up to par yet. But forget about that matchup. Forget about that matchup. Let's talk about my six to see, and some others as well. We'll talk about some other games aside from the main six here. First off, to start Thursday night, Big Fox is televising this big, big game for the Ohio State Buckeyes against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Now, we know that Ohio State likes to reload, so what are they going to do with C.J. Stroud as court head quarterback? Because, you know, he's kind of a question mark right now. That, that's a lot of freshmen and stuff like that. A lot of these freshman quarterbacks and stuff and these new guys are big question marks right now. And you know P.J. Fleck in Minnesota are going to have, you know, going to have one hell of a time opening up on a Thursday night at home. There's still tickets being sold right now, as far as I know, for that. Friday night, you got North Carolina, Sam Howell. You know, he's back. He's honestly my one of my other favorites to win the Heisman right now. And he's going up against Virginia Tech, you know. And, I mean, Virginia Tech ain't no slouch. Remember, this is the ACC Coastal Division. And the Coastal Division could bring about chaos early. And like it always does. So North Carolina has to win this game. They have to keep it moving. You know, it's going to be a long season for the Tar Heels if they lose opening week. You, know, you can't, you can't do that. You cannot do that. All right, let's talk about these Saturday games. Who, Spencer Rattler and the Oklahoma Sooners? What we do know from right now, currently, right now as it stands. The Tulane game will probably be going to Norman, so Oklahoma will have four straight home games due to the hurricane that has come to New Orleans and surrounding areas. Unfortunately, that Tulane game will have to be, you know, switched around or something as far as Tulane getting their home game from this thing, from the series that they have at Oklahoma, so that'll have to be switched around. But it doesn't matter if the game is played in Tulane or in Oklahoma's home stadium in Norman, Oklahoma's big favorites, and we're expecting Spencer Rattler to go off, you know, in his first game of the season, you know. I wonder, again, how Oklahoma will do, because again, this is another team that likes to reload. How will they fare? You know, there's going to be a lot of speculation there. You know, what can what can Oklahoma do? The other big game at, at the um, noon, you know, at the noon time slot, noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, Penn State, Wisconsin. Boy, oh boy, these two teams, they did not look too great last year. And they're both trying to rebound. You know, Penn State had an awful year last year. Wisconsin was kind of middle of the road. And, you know, I wonder what both these teams are going to do to get themselves, you know, pick themselves back up and put themselves together again. I wonder what they're going to do. Here's another game that I really didn't expect, Indiana and Iowa being a ranked matchup. Didn't expect this game to be a ranked matchup. Both these teams, you know, had some interesting years last year. They both looked really good, but I wonder, you know, can they sustain that type of success? And this game is going to kick off at 2.30, 3.30 Eastern, and along with that will be a mega, mega matchup, Alabama-Miami. And Miami's got Derek King back, and they're wondering, you know, can Miami keep that momentum that they had early last year and sustain that momentum this year? And Alabama's just looking to get Bryce Young going, you know, because, I mean, he's, he's a young guy, and, you know, you know how young guys in Alabama's offense at quarterback can flourish until they become, you know, megastars, just like that. So Bryce Young has a lot on his plate. And Alabama is also another team looking to reload and win a second straight national championship. And again, I wonder how this is going to go. Could this game be close? I'm hoping this game will be close because if it's not, 
it's just going to be a bad time for everybody. And you don't want to hear Alabama dominates all year long, don't you? I don't want to hear that either. Another big game around that same time frame, it'll be like an hour later that it will kick off. It will be my Texas Longhorns taking on the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Now, the Raging Cajuns are hungry. They're hungry to get, you know, into that coveted Group 5 New Year's Six Bowl and maybe even more with the big, big time victory against the Longhorns of Texas. And, you know. Hudson Card has been named the starting quarterback over Casey Thompson for Steve Sarkeesian's first game. And I wonder how Steve Sarkeesian is going to get things going. You know, you cannot you cannot discredit this Louisiana Raging Cages team. They did they did damn good last year. They did really, really good last year. And again, the Raging Cages are returning a lot of guys, so they have so the Longhorns have to be stout on both offense and defense, get B. John Robinson the ball, you know, it, it, it just makes perfect sense. It just makes perfect sense to just feed Robinson all day long. It just makes perfect sense. It's going to be hot. You know, Texas Heat ain't no slouch, so hurry up, hurry up, make this game short, make it sweet. Don't let it go too long, okay? Okay, Longhorns, all right? Oh, boy, mega matchup at the 6.30, 7.30 Eastern time slot. Oh, you already know what it is. It's Georgia Clemson in the uh, Duke's Mayo Classic. You know, we got the Chick-fil-A kickoff, you know, for Alabama Miami and the Duke's Mayo Classic in Charlotte. Oh boy, number three versus number five. Sign me up. Sign us all up. This game this game has CFP implications written all over it. This, honestly, this game right here could decide the fates of both Georgia and Clemson right here and right now. And DJ Uwilagalele for Clemson, and JT Daniels for Georgia are going to have to ball out. You know, they're going to have to go crazy on this field on Saturday night. There's also LSU UCLA on Saturday night as well. Keep that game in mind. That game is going to be really, really fun because UCLA, they're trying to get it together under Chip Kelly, and LSU's trying to get back after a disappointing season last season. You know, they got to get it back together. Those Tigers, they want to contend in the SEC West, and UCLA is looking to you know keep things going, keep the momentum rising to prepare for Pac-12 play because Pac-12 is a tough, tough cookie. And for most of the other teams in the top 25, there's not really a lot to say. Um, they're either going up against cupcakes, you know, in the FBS and FCS, or they're just not even playing. So, not even playing games that are significant. But on Sunday, oh, Sunday, 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 Notre Dame, Florida State. That's going to be interesting, you know. What in the world will Notre Dame do? Because, I mean, they got a lot of... They got a lot going here. They got a lot going. You know, because, I mean, this team went to the College Bowl playoff last year, and I mean, they they gotta they gotta do something. They gotta do something to get back to the College Bowl playoff. And Florida State's just looking to improve under Mike Norville. Is Jack Cohn the starter for Notre Dame now? I believe so, because Ian Book is gone, and so Notre Dame has to get things rolling quickly through their five ACC games and a couple of other big games throughout the season. they got to get it going really, really quickly. So, um, you know, that's going to be a great Sunday night game, but there's also a couple more games on Sunday. So, let me talk about them real quick. Now, if you didn't see the MEAC Swag Challenge in Week 0 on Saturday night, you'll know that that was the best game of Week 0. And we got a couple more goodies on Sunday, September the 5th, involving HBCUs. Now, these will be probably the only other HBCU games I watch until at least the SWAC Championship. There could potentially be other games down the line that I might be interested in. But for right now, first off, the, um, the Orange Blossom Classic. Oh, yes. There's two teams that are angry in this game, and they're going to be going head-to-head -head in Miami Gardens. That's the Florida A&M Rattlers, who are hungry, who are ready to go into the new... I mean, the SWAC is new, it's bigger, it's, it's 
even more competitive than it was before, and it's just going to be another crazy year for HBCU football. And this is no better way to start Florida A&M angry after, you know, not being able to go to the Celebration Bowl in 2019 due to APR violations, taking on a another team that is angry, another team that has a lot of talent, another team that has a big name coach named Deion Sanders. You may recognize that name. Yeah, those Jackson State Tigers who were very, very disappointing in the spring. And, uh, you know, these two teams, they, they this, this is going to be one hell of a fight, I'm telling you that right now. Again, the swack, the swack this year hangs in the balance of a lot of teams. And, I mean, I don't know who's coming out of this conference. I'm not even going to lie to you. I don't know who's coming out. I don't know who's winning because I don't know who's winning this conference. And I don't know who's going to the Celebration Bowl. I really don't. I mean, any of these teams look like they could make it. All, all corn could make it. And we'll talk about, you know, another one real quick soon. And, you know, Southern could make it. Florida A&M could make it. Bethune could make it. You know, Alabama State could, you know, go back. Alabama A&M too, you know. I mean, it's just a, it's just a bunch of teams in, in the SWAC that are able to compete, that are competitive, extremely competitive to the point where it's crazy. And the other game, the other game, aside from the Orange Blossom Classic on Sunday, will be the Black College Football Hall of Fame game between the Tennessee State Tigers, who's debuting a man y'all may recognize, a man y'all may recognize as head coach Eddie George. Oh yes, how will Tennessee State take on a Grambling State team that has also had a disappointing spring season? And I mean, Grambling's just looking to get back on track, you know. I mean, again, the SWAC is going to be very competitive. I haven't really talked about the MIAC much. The SWAC is going to be very competitive. These two games right here really are going to test what this conference can do this year. Because I'm having a lot of expectations for HBCUs this year. And I hope, you know, as the season progresses, things continue to get good for the SWAC. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. And again, I hope I watch more HBCU football games throughout the season. But you never know. We, you never know. I probably won't even mention HBCUs again until December when it comes bowl time. So, I mean, it is what it is there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got to say here for week one. I, I know that's a lot of games really to talk about. But, you know, we're, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm, I'm Excited. Six straight days of football. I mean, you can't get any better than that. And it all ends with the um, the second Chick-fil-A kickoff game between Louisville and Ole Miss with the Fighting Lane Kiffins. And Louisville, I believe they still have Malik Cunningham, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be one hell of a it's gonna be one hell of a week of football. I can't I can't wait. So with that being said, everybody, y'all take care. Have a good week and let's do this college football in full force now it's back